Hi, welcome to Plastic on Plastics, Tristan here. Today we're going to be talking about different ways we can make plastic products uh, with more sustainable solutions. So of course plastic is not a great thing for our oceans, it's not a great thing for our landfills, and it's best to try to minimize it as much as possible. However, in many applications, for medical applications or for child safe products, plastic is still the best way to uh, ship your products. Today we're going to look at four more sustainable plastic options. Okay, so many of you know that there are seven different types of plastic. Uh, you can see these numbers at the bottom of your plastic container. All of these plastics are recycled at different rates. So some are easily recycled and they have a higher percentage of being recycled and some uh, rarely get recycled. The most common type of recycled plastic is PET. And that's the plastic that you find in pop bottles, energy bottles, uh, stuff like that, which is why it is so easy to collect bottles and recycle them. By making your products out of PET, you can actually increase the chance of it being recycled. These containers are here, were made out of PET, um, and therefore they have the highest chance out of all the plastics to be recycled. PET may be a little more costly than other types of plastics, such as polypropylene, uh, but it is easier to recycle and it is better for the environment. You can also buy PET or PET pellets as recycled, so recycled PET, if you want to use post-consumer material. Another option for post-consumer material is just uh, PCR products, such as these two containers here. So these are products made out of any type of waste uh, that was previously used by a consumer. So this could be um, ocean plastics, uh, different life, landfill plastics, or just plastics that were recycled through blue bin recycling when you recycle your containers. Now PCR is harder to use than virgin plastic. Um, cost wise, it can be roughly about the same, sometimes a little more expensive, um, but it is again, a lot better to use recycled material when you can than virgin material. So the next material we're gonna talk about is PVOH or polyvinyl alcohol. These products and this material is actually dissolvable in water. Uh, it's most common in you know things that dissolve in water. So detergent pods, you know, when you're washing your clothes in the washing machine, it's the exact same principle and the exact same material, but we can use them for more rigid products. So you may be asking yourself, what happens to the product when it dissolves in water? Um, so when it does dissolve in water, generally it gets you know, taken to a water treatment facility, just like anything from your drain or your dishwasher does. Here it gets treated and bacteria actually eat the material, um, so there is actually no waste. So let me grab you an example of, of what this looks like over time. So here we have the three stages of PVOH when dissolving. As you can see, we're starting off with just a normal rigid container. You're probably more familiar with PVOH used in softer materials, uh, like the detergent pods, but we can make them in rigid plastics. Here we have uh, just about one hour, oh, it's kind of sticky, one hour of being in water, still water. Um, and this is actually cold water soluble, so it's not like we're boiling this or treating this at any specific plant. This is just in cold water for an hour. Um, it's a little bit sticky and you can see quite a bit of material starting to flake off of it. And then at last we have this remainder, I guess, of a container, if you can even call it that, um, here. And that's been in the water for about uh, 48 hours now. So this is actually the water is in. Um, there's a couple more pieces of, of it, but it's pretty much getting 100% dissolved. And I, and I think that maybe after another 48 hours, it's gonna be pretty close to uh, non-existent in our little experiment here. If you want more information on PVOH, I've included a really great video link uh, in the description below. So unfortunately I don't have the last example in hand to show you, but the last example I want to talk about is actually hemp filled plastic. So hemp can be used to offset the amount of virgin material or recycled material, just offset the amount of plastic in your product. So with polypropylene, you can go up to about 25% uh, and have the same uh, characteristics as a full plastic product. So hemp is just a really great way to reduce the amount of plastic in your product. Especially if you're working in the cannabis industry, communicating to your customers that you're actually making packaging out of a byproduct um, is actually a gr really great way to uh, educate the customer on, on different ways to creatively and sustainably think and move going forward. You can also use hemp in PLA or polyactic acid, which is actually a 100% plant-based material. So it is actually 100% biodegradable. So if that is a viable option for your product, that is another really great sustainable way to go. So to conclude, there's a lot of different ways we can use plastics in more sustainable manners. It's just about thinking outside the box and thinking what our constraints actually are and seeing where different materials can fit into that. So these are some options that you may want to consider instead of going straight into virgin materials if you are making plastic products. So if you need help making these products um, or have any questions in general, just hit us up at plasticonplastics.com.